Rinpoche, I wonder if you, uh, being a high lama or Brad Pitt figure in the Tibetan tradition, feel any... Um, <laughs> Brad Pitt. Uh, it's, I think it's very interesting that you wrote this book and, and really talk about the enlightened mind as transcending or being without culture because the, the culture that your tradition comes from is a culture in diaspora and a culture that, if it's not preserved in some way, you know, is really is as is as endangered as the cheetah, really, in some ways. And <laughs> bodhicitta. <laughs> bodhicitta. Okay. Um, so I'm wondering if you feel any extra pressure or need to to maintain some of the. It doesn't seem like you do in this book, but if there's a more cultural or even family lineage pressure because you come from a, a culture that's endangered to maintain some of the forms of Tibetan Buddhism a little bit longer to not assimilate them completely? Um, I think the heart of uh, Tibetan Buddhism is this wisdom, right? the wisdom and the compassion teachings of the Buddha. And that's, I think, really important for us to preserve. And that's why, you know, I think I've been talking about it a lot, like, you know, this... Uh, uh, transformation is, you know, or transmission, or transplanting, changing form, is really uh, important. But at the same time, uh, this uh, kind of transition has to be safe, smooth, and carefully done. You know, not just change for the sake of changing it, uh, but change with a deeper sense of contemplation and and a way how you can really preserve. The, the wisdom and compassion teachings uh, without losing that, if we can transform any sh form or shape of the container, then I think it's, uh, there's no, uh, no danger of losing anything here. Hmm. And I see it as a two separate things. You know, there's one which is Dharma, the Buddha's teaching, and then the two, the second, is like you know, our own like, mundane sense of Tibetan culture. Hmm. I, I just wanted to remind us that, uh, you know, all of us feel this about Tibetan culture, that it's endangered because it's in such a uh, harsh and immediate change. Mm. But uh, I would also remind all of us about impermanence. And uh, yes. say in Japan, for example, which hasn't had this experience, a uh, hundred years ago, this uh, abbreviated case I'm wearing would go to my ankles. Oh. Uh, but it continues to shrink <laughs> <laughs> by fashion and change in Japan. And even what I consider very traditional Japanese forms in Japan have changed and are changing a great deal and are now being influenced exactly. by our Western forms. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, the terrible treatment of the Tibetan people and culture is something that, that distresses all of us. But I just want to remind us all that we're all part of this great change that's going on in the world. So someday maybe this will become a pin. A pin. <laughs> <laughs> Way ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, right. Shrinking. And yours may grow as a... Right, right, right. Yeah. Like. <laughs> that's more hip-hop culture. Yeah. <laughs>